Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you step by step on how I built this DIY absolutely massive bioactive green iguana cage. And as you can see, I can fit inside right in here. Um, only it could be described in as massive and uh, show you step by step. To give some real quick background information, this is Charlie. I bought him in 2017, December 17th about two years later now and he lost his tail at the pet store the day I bought him. This is Beatrice. I've had her for a couple of weeks. She is a Russian tortoise. Charles is a green iguana. I originally had Charlie in a 55 gallon uh, bioactive terrarium. Then I moved him to a custom built um, about 110 gallon um, tank and uh, each of those two things lasted about a year and now he's going to be in this which is about 500 gallons on the inside it's about seven feet tall two and a half feet wide and five feet long um, on the outside and then it's the same dimensions on the inside side except it's a little bit over six feet tall on the inside uh, there's an extra foot because of the hood First thing that my dad and I did is plan this out. We drew up um, sub things, so then I we both knew what we were building, basically. And then we had to go out to the garage, look at what wood we had. Um, we always like to reuse this. This build is based off of four oak doors that we got. And then um, we just started putting things together. Um, uh, first, we started with the hood and the bottom. Now the bottom is going to have pond liner inside of it and then the hood we need because of all the special lighting green iguanas need and I wanted to be able to um, enclose that lighting within to kind of retain heat and everything um, as well as have a um, chicken wire or uh, screen basically top. So um, here you can see the hood right there and then you, ha you have that um, piece made of two by fours that will go right into the the bottom of the hood that will hold the um chicken wire the heavy duty chicken wire that we have now this is the bottom here and i'm sanding it out so then i can add the pond liner without any worries of um, breaking the pond liner then i went ahead and brought the hood in and i stained it because um, the oak doors are also stained and I wanted it to look nice. So then um, we need to varnish it, I believe, and we actually used a stain and varnish combination. So basically I stained it twice, so that's why it's so dark. And then here you can see the other pieces. Then we need to modify the doors. We needed to make them um, exactly 30 inches, I believe, um, which is two and a half feet. And um, also some of the doors had like holes in them and stuff. So we had to cut out pieces there and glue them in. Here is the background. We used a couple pieces of wood for the background to um, go ahead and um, put it together. And then we have the doors again, just modifying different things that we need to do. This is when we put together the um, iguana cage to get an idea of what it would be like. And as you can see, we had to cut the background because um, it didn't actually fit. So I'm glad that we put this together, but we put it together in here and then we go ahead and take it apart again because I still have to stain, stain some things. And um, as you can see here, the doors I needed to uh, stain the uh, pieces of wood that we added in as well as the um, sides of the doors and this time I just went ahead and you went straight for the varnish slash stain um, like the one that's combined so then I didn't have to um, do this multiple times and then I got to do uh, one of my favorite parts which is uh, designing the background now this was basically like my um, canvas my um, basically where I get to work on art, basically. Um, so I had an, a couple ideas of what I wanted to do exactly here. I had some foam to uh, prop things up, and my inspiration for from this was um, High Banks. It's a park that's uh, in Ohio, and um, if you walk down in where there's, like, rivers and stuff or creeks, then the sides um, have, like, all different types of different um 
different sticks and things and roots mainly that are coming down so I tried to um, mimic that and then this is a great stuff expanding foam gaps and cracks um, I went ahead covered the whole thing in that and here I'm using a wire brush as well as a razor blade to cut the foam and expose the porous inside so then the dry lock will um, stick onto it and make it look like rock and look natural and everything. So then here I moved into the other garage and I went ahead and started um, doing dry lock. First I had to um, fix up some rough edges and stuff, add a little bit more expanding foam, just do different things on it. One thing that I did is wherever there was the white polystyrene foam, I uh, went over it with a flame. So you couldn't see the balls once I did the dry lock. Okay, so now I'm going to dry lock the backgrounds and I'm gonna start off with this one as a test deal. And then once I, I'll be good at it by then, and then I'll do it on the back, this background. Um, Cause this one you'll really see because it's Charlie's background and there won't really be any plants in here. While this tank will be filled with plants. So you won't see the background as much. The background will be more dark while this one you'll see the whole thing so you want it to look nicer so here i have the dry lock and this i think we colored it gray so then we have quick crete um i mean it, we got it colored gray and then we have quick crete color coloring so um i'll get a couple other cups and go ahead and um get some of the dry lock into these and then use those so i have the charcoal and the terracotta because those were more naturalistic type of colors and then we just have gray so it's like gray and then brown or red or something and then um black so um now let's start on the stink real quick i mix the quickery and the dry lock so i've definitely found my way of doing things i like the two colors that i have i basically have dark gray and then the terracotta and the black as well um together make more of a dark brown red than just a bright um brown red color um sorry here so uh the colors are kind of crazy i don't know if you can see them right now but you will once it dries they're wild okay i just went in with it everywhere basically i'm going to use these two as a base color and then mix them around or whatever in on this now this should be a lot easier because first of all bigger brush second of all this one i had to do inside a tank this one i don't have to do within the tank so um i should just be able to paint it on there like normal the problem is it's not really painting it's just dabbing so um the like every single little hole on here i need to make sure i get um which is one of the problems with this another problem is i don't think that this stuff will come off glass like i have no clue honestly i've never used this before so that's an issue because um, I got it all over the grass, but I don't really care because this is going to be a really cool terrarium and there's going to be plants everywhere and it'll be fine. So definitely more interesting concept, but the idea is that I'll be harder and it'll be water resistant, which is important in this case. So um, <laughs> uh, let's see how it works on the green iguanas background. So I plan to get this all done in one night. I had done the other um enclosure and then i start on this one but what i quickly realized is that that can would not be enough to finish that entire background so we actually had to get a gallon can as well the only thing i have to say about doing this is that i think it works really well it's just really time consuming and can be quite boring um it's just a lot of dabbing like a lot it's not quite painted. So the background on the new iguana cage is done so that means at the very least we can install the green iguana enclosure here um but to do that we need to um move all this stuff so uh the thing with this is when i set up my room didn't know where to put everything so some of the things ended up going here but a lot of the stuff will actually be going inside the new green iguana enclosure um honestly this tank might i don't know but for now it won't be um uh all of so that substrate will be used for this enclosure and that enclosure um, and then all of this stuff will either go inside the iguana cage or inside that enclosure um, but the, the stuff will be used for enclosures um, or it'll be stored somewhere else in my room like I don't know where the trash can's going 
Uh, like I said, this tank might go inside the iguana's cage, but for now, it is going to go right here. Um, just like right here. Uh, there's just enough space to throw it there. And um, I'll be able to plug everything in with that. But um, it won't stay there for long. Because once we get the iguana into the new enclosure, so just for a few days, we'll have the new enclosure and the old enclosure in here. But um, once we get the iguana into the new enclosure, and we can take this out then i have another stand that i'm just going to throw in here for now that i can put that tank on and then these tanks on and um it'll be here and it's smaller than this so um, then i can work on this tank outside before i get it ready to put it back inside and then i need to find somewhere for the turtles to go which will probably be there or they'll be outside actually no the turtles will be outside by then um by the time we get this enclosure back in here and then the geckos will go into that enclosure and that enclosure and then i'll have this space and a bunch of other space to work on because all the turtles will be outside so um what i'm getting to here is that um i'm going to be doing water changes today so i figured it'd be a perfect time to move this enclosure over there and um once i'm done with the water changes then i'll move all this stuff over here so then i don't have to deal with it for a little while um so we can move in the iguana cage um, to today sometime. So, uh, to do that, we're gonna have to move all this stuff. So I'll probably have to move these enclosures and stuff, a bunch of stuff. But for now, I'm just moving this tank right here while I am doing a water change. So I went ahead and drained the tank using a peanut butter jar and then, uh, put the edge on a towel and slid it over. And then um, once I was done clearing out that whole area, I went ahead and swept and swiffered um, everything because I wanted it to be clean underneath where we would put the um, iguana cage so then uh, we wouldn't get any debris under it or anything. Now that my room's all ready, I'm going to take each one of these doors and wipe it down because they're all um, like gross, as you can see, just from being out in the garage. And also they weren't clean when we got them. So um, I'm going to go ahead and wipe them down, make sure they're all ready. And then I'm probably going to lay down the bottom in here in my living room. So then when my dad gets home, we can go ahead, staple on the um, liner here and get this thing into my room as soon as possible. Because after I get in my room, I have to uh, put expanding foam around the edges of the background to connect it to the rest of the build. And that's going to take a day or two to get all that done so I'd rather you know get it done as fast as possible because I want to get the iguana in here and I want to get Beatrice in there so uh, wiping down doors so I just real simply did this with a soapy rag and then some Windex on the windows and then I went ahead and um, fixed the pond liner how I wanted it inside of the um, bottom there and then when my dad came home we uh went around the whole thing and we just stapled it in because the doors will um be screwed around the sides so we didn't really worry about um any any other way of holding it in this was just kind of a temporary um way the doors will really be holding it in um it, it won't just be on the staples and then i went around and cut off all the loose stuff so at this point, we had to move in all the materials to build the iguana cage. So uh, to do that first, we had to move the old iguana cage and move all the terrariums off of it. And then we real quickly just put everything together. We slid in the background after we got the side doors on, um, got on I'm the top. I'm not exactly sure when the time lapse cut off. My phone ran out of battery or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. We were in the middle of working, so I didn't have really time to mess with it and my room is a complete mess. So now I have a couple things to do. So we got this all in place, okay? Um, I'm not gonna put, we're not gonna put the door on until um, I get the inside done. So the inside still isn't done, even though I've already done a bunch of stuff. So um, I'll show you what I need to do in a second. But right now I need to clean up. I need to clean up the floor and then I need to uh, stain a little bit, silicone a little bit, and expanding foam a little bit. Let's get back to the time lapse, I guess. So I wanted to make sure I kept everything clean throughout the process of working on this. So the first thing I did is put everything back before I could work on the iguana cage a little bit more. 
I also swept and swiffered again. Okay guys, so now real quick, there's a couple touch up type of things that I need to do. So, um, first of all, I think I'm going to do the stain. So I need to stain the, um, some holes that my dad accidentally made. There's one right here, uh, which you probably can't see very well. And then there's one right there. And then somehow I need to get back, there's a hole that my dad made that's like really big for the um eventually the strip so then the cord could do go down that hole and i want to um uh do it up around there just to make it look nicer and then also i just saw i should probably do it right there as well um just right on that uh area where there's uh glue or whatnot there so um then i need to um silicone a little bit because right here my dad accidentally drilled through the liner so i don't know you can yeah you can see the little tiny hole i'm just gonna put some silicone on that and then push this down in it should probably be fine um the dirt's not gonna get all that high anyway um well it might but i don't know and then what we're going to do or what i'm going to do is i'm going to do expanding foam right here, all around the bottom here. So um, kind of in between here and then down below there. So then um, this just move, goes straight into um, this stuff. So this is waterproof down here, it's pond liner. So um, if I spray the background of here, it'll move all the way down the background straight into the pond liner. Don't have to worry about it getting under molding and stuff back there. So those two uh those three things i need to do i'm going to start off with this um i need to get some paper towels because i'm sure all these things will be a little bit messy i have some gloves on i have some dirty clothes on that i don't care if they get stuff on them i began to do the stain again just um to fix up some areas i did that corner down there and then i went up top and i did the hole in the back and that was just because i figured there'd be a lot of humidity in the top and i didn't want to have to worry about it i put the silicone there and then i did the expanding foam and i did i put the expanding foam down the sides just in case there was any other holes that um we might have made on accident from um, drilling and stuff and now is the time that i get to set it up so i had some things to decide here and one of those was how i wanted the water dish i've been taking quite a while to decide but this is quite an important decision to decide because this affects the maintenance on this tank um very heavily so um i originally thought of putting this tank inside actually i originally thought of putting this tank inside this is a 55 gallon and it would fit but it would take up like so much of this tank, like half the thing, and I just don't want to do that. Like this one, this is a 30 gallon long. That took up a ton of the space. Um, as you can see, this is the stand for it. And then I was thinking, oh, maybe a 20 gallon um, could be in here, but now it was too big too. And then a 10 gallon, it just looks unnatural. Like it doesn't look right. So um, not that this <laughs> uh, galvanized tub right here does look natural, it's just um, going to be a little bit easier to work with. And honestly, I think it would look really bad if I had a tank because you're going to be able to see it. And it's probably going to get gross and it's just probably going to look bad. So I think that this is a really good idea and it's going to work really well. So I am going to try the um, system of uh, burning this, burning the wood, because I am going to have to have this on some sort of stand. What I'm going to do is it'll be actually just on um pieces this small so it'll be here like this what i'm gonna go do i think is go um screw together a basically just get two more pieces that i can screw together into a um square to make as a stand and then i will um burn that um, in a way of sealing it so then it doesn't um, go bad, bad under all the moisture and stuff and uh, we can see how that goes because um, I can't just set this on the drainage layer because it'd probably collapse and stuff and I don't want to have to um, that wouldn't be so good 
So I found more spare pieces. I cut them so then it could be come square and then I went ahead and pre-drilled the holes and drilled in the holes made sure the the thing was solid and good and everything uh, probably used way overkill um, for the screws there and then I unscrewed it um, burnt it with um, that thing and then I went ahead and screwed it back together and um, burnt it a little bit more and then I started working on the expanding foam and the drainage layer first i carved out the expanding okay, foam so now we are going to test this thing out and i don't know how you're going to be able to see this but i assure you that the thing is in there we are and here is a little shelf as you can see but that is the the thing the product of my work so far and here i'm going to test it out with some water See if the water goes through because this is called something i don't remember what it's called but um it's like what people use for uh let me think gardening and it kind of takes a second for the water to go through but i want to make sure it does now as you can see it's trailing off there and i figured it would do that um but as you may be able to see uh, i'm probably in your light as well so I figured it would trail off into you know, onto the sides, and I didn't really care if that would happen, because if that does happen, then it would just go over into the sides and then go down to the bottom, which is where we want, where none of the dirt will be. But what I'm thinking is that where it is wet, it will um, like saturate the cloth, and then it'll go through, if that is how it is. But I don't know. Well, it's definitely a very weird feeling. I'm trying to get it to see if it'll go through or not. It seems to be... Yeah, I think right here it sunk through. So, yeah, it's working like it's supposed to be. The reason I was testing it is because um, on the channel Leopard Gecko, she was going to use this, this type of same cloth, I think, for her um, drainage layer for her bioactive leopard gecko tank but when she tested it with like water it beat it up just like this is and um somebody commented um like that it, that wouldn't actually be a problem like it just needed to be saturated and that makes sense to me because i mean this is like landscaping mesh that's what it's called it's called landscaping mesh and um obviously water goes through it all the time it's what you put under like flower beds and stuff so anyway i'm gonna get the 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 bigger part of this done and then I need to cut out an area for the the little tiny stand for his water dish. So I have to say that um, using this egg crate is not the most fun thing in the world um, having to cut it and everything but I was quite proud of what I had built even if it it didn't look great or anything. Well this is pretty amazing it actually fits which is great first try. And it fits, which is fantastic, considering it's like 2-something in the morning. I'm just not going to sleep until I finish this. So, um, now the last bit will be this deal. Sink it in, um, right about there. When I take that piece out to cut it, I will add these supports as well. Or I'm actually going to put them around the hole that I make there. I'll measure it, probably. Then start cutting, and then I'll put these down in, and then I will, I'll get the, I'll add more mesh. So I did just what I had said there, and um, this also fit perfectly the first time. One thing, the one thing that I regret about doing in this whole enclosure is that I didn't support the bottom enough. I should have had um, things going around both ways and um, just a whole lot more support under that um, drainage layer. But here I, I took it out, and I went ahead and um, dry locked the expanding foam down there. And then I got uh, Beatrice ready. I took down her enclosure and cleaned off some rocks that I would be using inside of this enclosure. So now it is my absolute favorite part of doing any enclosure. I get to hardscape it and add in the soil and really finally set this up. That's right, this huge... Um, 
green iguana terrarium, uh, bioactive terrarium specifically, or vivarium, um, it's going to be crazy. So I don't think, honestly, I don't think I have enough dirt to fill up this um, container. I'm planning on that. Um, so I'll probably be adding more, or I will be adding more, because any dirt that's in any of these um, crested gecko tanks will be going into there, um, because I no longer want giant canyon isopods in with the crested geckos, um, so they'll be getting new substrate, and they're gonna get new enclosures anyway. So, anyway, there's a couple things that we need to do. So obviously this is filled with a bunch of resources and stuff, because I'm just trying to put things where they're gonna go. Um, but first of all, I am going to be um, part-time cohabitating Charles in with Beatrice, and Beatrice is my Russian tortoise. Now, she is up here in this really dirty water. Um, this is lovely Beatrice, she's a cutie, but as you can see, she pooped and peed in here, which is good because it looks pretty normal, just like um, Charlie's does. Excuse the fact that it's so dark in here. Um, that's Charlie's poop. He poops in his water too. Reptiles tend to poop when they get in their water. Here's Charlie. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is since her stuff is gross, I'm just going to go ahead and set her in here for a little while. She can walk around and I can kind of see Charles' reaction to her. So that's first off. Second off, I need to figure out what I'm doing with the um, this stuff for the time being because uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing that in the future, how, how I'm going to be doing the uh, electricals, the wiring. So this needs, um, what is it, that thing, that strip, that strip needs to be inside of there. Um, so I don't know how I'm going to do that. I think that'll be a later thing. I think I need to get it set up first and then I'll deal with that. But I think I am going to try to put um, his heat and stuff in there just to like get some temperatures and stuff with uh, this thing. Put the probes in there um, uh, right here on his basking area. So um, I'm gonna try to figure out some of that real quick and then I'm going to sort things. So I have the substrate which is in this thing and this thing and then if we absolutely have to, like if that's just like nothing inside this tank which looking at it, it probably won't be, I will go ahead and add all this substrate, but what that means is, is that I am going to have to um, like completely mix a ton of new substrate for the new Crest Gecko tanks, which isn't a problem, but I, I'm looking at it, I think I'm gonna have to do that. So, um, cause this doesn't have any insects in it. And uh, like I said, I wanna start new with the new Crest Gecko enclosures. So um, the dirt's there, I got that. And then I have some things to go inside the dirt um like this bag right here is just a bunch of pieces of like bark and stuff as you can see basically really rough mulch and i'm gonna mix that in there um just to give the little microclimates for the the um isopods and springtails and um there's worms as well and eventually i'll add things like um what is it, mealworms and superworms and just like a ton of different types of feeder insects and just kind of have them live in here. Uh, I'll probably add in some, like a couple adult doobie roaches as well, uh, just as the, the cleanup crew as well as everything, at, like just to have them in here, maybe I'll uh, pick one out every once in a while, feed it to another animal, um, just the naturalistic type of way. Um, so those will be mixed in and then I have like smaller hardscape pieces. And then, um, I was speaking of that. So I have these, this bag of different smaller hardscape pieces, as I said, and then I have this tub of just a ton of wood. So what I need to do is split these two tubs into two tubs, um, and then figure out what I'm going to use eventually in the crust gecko enclosures, and then figure out what I might want to use in the iguana cage. I added Beatrice into the iguana cage. I've removed his um, heat light and I put it in the top, but I couldn't move the strip up there yet because we have to remove the green iguana cage to do that. And then I went ahead and sorted through all the wood, decided what I wanted to do with it, and um, got the pieces of wood that I'd really want to use. Then I um, put the substrate, mixed it with all the different things, um, got ready to put in the plant. I added in the plant as well as the hardscape and then botanicals and then I added in um, Beatrice after spraying it down. 
So I actually ended up using all the substrate and all three tubs as well as a substrate from one of um, my terrariums that I decided to take down. And then um, later that day, my dad came in and he um, we installed the door. We had to cut the top and the bottom of it because um, it wasn't the right size. But then, as you just saw, added in Charlie and um, he had... Uh, a heck of a time of coming out of his enclosure, but um, I did get him out. And then we removed the old iguana cage to work on it out in the garage, and we added a new stand for um, the crest gecker tank along with the little turtles. And then, um, like every other night, I went ahead and cleaned up everything in the room and swept and did all of that type of stuff. So here you can see Charlie in his new, beautiful, absolutely amazing uh, terrarium that is just just fantastic and um this was him exploring i think that night that we added him in um or the next day one of the two so those are corn plants inside i did a different video about getting those i got those at lowe's for like 14 dollars, and so far the first few days he's been doing well with them and then in his water dish i have some um, duckweed and then there's moss placed around the bottom of the terrarium as well because the soil tends to stay um, moist and I've been spraying them down they've been doing pretty well and he hasn't seemed to bother bother them but um, he's doing well he's not pacing the tank he's just um, exploring and I feel like he's enriched um, a lot by this tank and um, it's just very cool to have him in here so um, then I fixed up, like I said, I, I fixed up everything again, um, uh, cleaned up, swept and everything, and got it all ready. So it is currently uh, 12.30 at night, um, and it took about two hours, I want to say, to clean up, but everything is cleaned up now. Um, the floors are swept, everything somewhere. Um, still have a couple things to do uh like figure out whatever i'm going to do with all these pothos plants but i have them here soaking um so they don't dry out i need to go through that get the soil out sort the soil from the, the bio balls and um i guess i can take this shirt out real quick but basically in short everything's taken care of um for now, I think I'm going to eat, go to sleep. Uh, Charles is doing well. Um, I added some dubia roaches in there. I don't think any are... Actually, yeah, here's one right here. Um, I currently don't have a lock, but as you could just see, I had this sitting against it. I don't know if you can see this, but here's one of the roaches right here. I let him go up at the top so then they could crawl around a bit. There's one of the females and I'm sure she will scurry down to the bottom um, once it becomes light out. Actually, I'm just going to throw her down there. Um, there's Charles. Annoyed as always. Now, the issue is with putting roaches in, in there is that the enclosure is basically escape proof, except this right here is a really big gap, which isn't good, so they could easily come out of there. But other than that, everything else should be fine. So I think, well, I'm pretty positive at this point. I <laughs> lost one of the baby turtles in here. Um, there's obviously the Russian tortoise and Charlie, but other than that, there is Adam the red eared slider <laughs> so he's somewhere in here i put him in here just for a little while i was just gonna set i set him right here and i was just gonna let him crawl around and see what he wanted to do um with that and i looked in and he was right here and i was like oh i need to watch him because it looked like he was gonna crawl out of here um because the door wasn't on yet and i looked back in again and he's just completely gone so that really sucks. Um, I I pretty much determined that he's not anywhere in my room. Um, like, I don't think he did crawl out. I think that he's somewhere in here. 
uh, which like I said really sucks so I might have to go more thoroughly I looked all back there and behind that stuff and it looks like if I'm gonna find them I'll have to tear up some stuff in here I have no idea where the turtle went but um, I will find it I guess and then Beatrice seems to be doing well back there in um, her area. Okay, so the iguana cage has been fully set up for a week now, exactly. So um, after the last clip, the next day, I found the turtle. It was sitting right down there, um, completely fine. It's down back in its tank, uh, completely fine. The roaches um, didn't fare so well, about half of them, and I didn't add very many and um, probably more than half of them actually wound up in his water dish. No idea how, I don't know why they decided the one place in the tank was where they wanted to die. Um, so that's pretty disappointing, but there are some still in here. And then, um, as you can see, there's still no locks. That's the one thing we need to finish this, is we just need to um, put some locks on it. I've been putting this here every day, um, and I'll set this like right up against that so then he can't get it against that but like i said he hasn't been pacing he hasn't been trying to get out he hasn't tried tried to do any of that he's actually been quite enjoying um sitting right there it has been um interesting to see his different behaviors um than in his last enclosure first of all i just love this enclosure i love how he can sit out in the middle and he can just completely stretch out and be completely fine and not be encumbered in any way um, like the last enclosure. The last enclosure was just so small to him. I mean, um, this was this is about five times the size of his last one, which is just insane, and he's doing so much better in here. I see a lot of his just um, completely chill characteristic, and as you can see, he doesn't really have any reaction to me, and I'm right here, and this is only screen. So I have to get like, I have to poke my head in the enclosure or get really close for him to really have any reaction to me at all. So um, that's him taming down a little bit, as well as just the size of this enclosure is, I think, really giving him comfort. But another um, interesting behavior that I'm seeing in him is that he's not pooping in his water dish. I think he is getting in his water dish. I'm not sure. He probably isn't um, because I haven't really seen him. I think it might, like, even be too big. It kind of, like, scares him, but I'm not changing it. I think it looks fine. If he doesn't want to um, defecate in it, I'm just fine with that. Um, we'll see how long that lasts. And if it lasts a long time, I'll maybe make like a water feature or something. But for, um, for the past few days, any time that he poops, he's actually been pooping just like right up from there. And what he's actually doing is I'll spray him down because um, he's kind of been shedding and it's not like the highest humidity in here. It's like 60 something. I mean, this whole front is screen. So it's whatever humidity it is in my room, basically down there, it's real humid and everything, but up here, not so much. So what I've been doing is I'll spray him down. And whenever I spray him down, he'll um, defecate right when I do that because uh, they like to do it in water for some reason. So um, he's been uh, very active going from the bottom to the top. I've been feeding him right there and he'll get it every day. Beatrice, on the other hand, not so much. I think it's too cold and humid down there. Um, just like not her perfect environment. So I'm gonna have to figure out something for her, but she wasn't eating real well before either. So um, I just de definitely need to give her some attention and make sure she's doing well, but she doesn't seem to be um, eating a whole lot in this enclosure. Speaking of eating, Charlie um, hasn't really been eating uh, this plant the corn plant which is very good um now i do believe it is edible to him but i wouldn't feed it to him like often or anything uh he did seem to i think he has demolished like half of one of the leaves um so far but that's like it so um it seems like these will last uh quite a long time and um if he does eventually uh eat them then i'll probably just like fill this enclosure with sticks or something i don't know like do something else to to fill up the space but um i won't continue adding plants so this has pretty much been it he's doing very well i do i have a um, ceramic heat emitter and one of these lights up there and pretty soon he'll um, be getting a four foot uvb light that'll be perfect for him and i'll just have one led and one uvb in um this as you can see it's up there um, so I'll put that in. I'll do a video about that as well. Um, but this is pretty much it for his enclosure. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I think it turned out just, uh, I, I couldn't have wanted it any different. Okay, so I figured the only proper place to do an outro 
It's inside of the enclosure, and I'm standing in his water dish right now. Here's Charles. Reach out. Um, it's, it's pretty nice in here. It's nice and warm, for sure. My feet are freezing, though. It's so cold. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't know why I'm so happy, but, like, just being in here is the coolest thing. Uh, Charles is not very happy with me, but I hope that you guys are happy with me. I hope you enjoyed this video because it was really long, but I think I would have watched it. I mean, I did watch it. It was worth it. Um, this enclosure is awesome, and I'm standing inside of it. So have a fantastic day. Subscribe for more content. Comment down below any suggestions, anything. Uh, this enclosure has been working out really great so far, so have a great day.